Joining us for an update on the battle against the ISIS-affiliated rebels in southern Philippines is CBN News Asia correspondent Lucille Toulousan. She's on location in Mindanao. Lucille, what's the latest in the government's battle against these Mate Islamic rebels? Yes, hi Gary. Well, um, the govern government forces are really intensifying. Uh, they're um, destroying this ISIS-linked uh, group, with this, which is the Maute group. And uh, earlier this afternoon, we saw 25 armored vehicles, including tanks, um, uh, on the road on their way to Marawi City. Well, many Filipinos I know have been evacuated, Lucille, from that area. So where are they going? How are they holding up? Statistics say that there have been 180,000 uh, internally displaced uh, people and uh, this is about two-thirds of the estimated population of Marawi City and uh, most of them are here in the city where we are now. Iligan City is uh, the closest city to Marawi. It's just about uh, 45 minutes to an hour ride uh, going to Marawi City and there are lots of uh, evacuation centers now here in Iligan City and some of the hotels also have turned into evacuation centers and gyms and uh, mosques and uh, some churches too and so it's really a very depressing situation um, in the evacuation centers that are really it's really a crisis for your country, and we know there have been many people kidnapped by these Maute rebels as well. What's the status of the kidnapped priest, Father Chito? And he says as many as 200 others are being held hostage. Yes, um, I saw that viral uh, video of Pastor Chito pleading the president, uh, President Duterte, to uh, you know stop the. Um, stop the fighting and stop striking and launching airstrikes against the Maute terrorist groups. And uh, Pastor Chito was pleading that, uh, he said that, you know, this group, the Maute group, they're ready to die. Um, and so, and, and the Maute are saying that uh, they should, uh, the government should leave them alone to, uh, you know, have their own laws, the Sharia law, to practice their law in Marawi City, because Marawi City is the Muslim center of the Philippines. But that, that's probably unlikely, isn't it, Lucille? I, I think your uh, president, Duterte, is going to be very aggressive in trying to wipe them out. Yes, that is right. Um, as we all know, uh, now there's martial law here here in Mindanao, and he is really dead serious in uh, destroying this these terrorist groups. And you know, our president comes from uh, Mindanao, and so he knows he knows what he's doing. Also, we heard yes. one story, Lucille, about two women who defended some Christian workers at a gun shop when Islamic militants stormed in, and they risked their lives to protect their Christian workers. How common is that? Do, do Muslims and Christians get along? Is, is that a rare thing to see Muslims stepping in and defending Christians? Mm, that, that is very common here in Mindanao. And Christians and the Muslims really live harmoniously, especially there's a, uh, there's a place in Marawi City. It's the Mindanao State University. And here it's a melting pot of the Christians and the Muslims. And actually this afternoon, we talked to a to one of the Christian professors in that university who was also trapped inside the university, inside the compound for three days. And, and uh, some Muslims also helped them escape and, you know, provided buses for them and to be able to escape uh, Marawi City. So do mo most of the people there just get along, Muslims and Christians, and most of the Muslims there don't really support what is happening with these Maute yes. rebels? You know, Gary, uh, our driver is a Muslim who's, who drives us around, and he's really angry. And he said they are not the true, the, they're not uh, the true followers of Islam. That is what he's saying, because he said that Islam means peace. And, and he said that these people are really just terrorists and they just, you know, they, they don't uh, support them. And they're also very, he's also very angry because they have businesses 
inside Marawi City, and so now they're losing money. So what is CBN doing to help the people of the area? You said you've got about 180,000 evacuees. What is CBN doing? Yes, uh, they've already started uh, validating the evacuation centers, and they've already identified some evacuation centers who have not uh, gotten any help. And this afternoon, they were asked to turn around because uh, in, the, in one of the towns that they were about to go to, there were sightings of ISIS. And, and so they had, you know, the, the DSWD here um, ask them to turn around. And so they're still going to that town, but in another area. They're doing feeding tomorrow. Of course, uh, it's Ramadan, and so the feeding will be at 6 o'clock in, in the evening. And also they are uh, distributing some mats and slippers and some, some clothes and some food, which uh, the evacuees really need. So very dangerous and risky for them, but they're going forward and showing the love of Christ and reaching out to help the people. Finally, Lucille, what do you expect will happen in the days ahead? More fighting, Gary. And, uh, but, you know, the, the government forces said that by this weekend, they really hope and they, they believe that they will, they will be able to control the Maute group. Lucille, thanks so much for being with us. We look forward to Thank more reports. Thank you so much, Gary.